Here's the tricopter I've been flying for quite some time now. Getting into things quickly here, you may want to take a look at the previous video I made on my tricopter. You can see the improvements I've made on it since that video. So here it is, in all of its 3 motor glory. To start off, it has X2212-9 1400kV Sunny Sky motors which are purchased from BuddyRC.com. These motors can produce over 4 pounds of thrust each and can be run off of either 3 cell or 4 cell. Also, being a higher KV, they are both quieter and cause less vibration since the props spin so fast. On them, I have 9x4.5 APC multi-rotor propellers. Now these props are incredibly amazing at how much acceleration they give these motors, but my god, they are more out of balance than gym fan props. Not to mention a bit more loud, so I'd recommend just the APC slow fly props for your project. On the ESC side, I have 30 amp afro ESCs from Hobby King. On the servo lead for motor 1, I have the BEC plugged in. Then the ESCs for motor 2 and 3, I have the BECs disconnected from the servo connector. Then motor 4 is where the servo gets plugged in, and then motor 5 I have a 5V 5 5A five BEC plugged in. The reason for motor 1 having its BEC plugged in is because motor 1 is isolated from motors 2.8 on the KK2, and each group needs its own power source. So motor 1 gets its power from the ESC's BEC, and motors 2 through 8 get power from the external BEC, providing a reliable power source to the KK2 and receiver. Also, the servo I use is a high tech HS82MG. Just don't cheap out on a servo when buying one. I don't want this falling out of the sky from loss of signal, so I have a rangelink receiver on it. The antenna is on the front left arm and does not interfere with anything else in the craft. I built this with the mind of aerial photography, so I did not cut corners with it. Hence the reason I have painted the arms black and the frame plates white. The arms are 37cm long and along with the frame plates are wood. Cutting the round corners on David's tricopter frame plans are too hard, so I made my own template on SketchUp that made all the lines straight. A few of my crashes were caused by my arms folding back mid-flight, so I have the arms bolted in place. Now to take this craft to an even further level of coolness, I bought a Taro T2D. In the middle of the frame I put a half inch dowel out and hung my gimbal there. On the gimbal I put popsicle sticks across the brackets and zip tied them onto the gimbal. Then I put some velcro on the mounting stick to isolate the vibrations and line up the popsicle sticks onto that. To hold it on the copter, I just have it zip tied on. None of this has ever failed me even in a crash. The gimbal is nice, but I really do wish I would've bought a nicer one. The Taro is never going to be perfectly vibration free like a DJI GoPro gimbal. The gimbal sticks under the frame a bit, in the way of the old camera slash battery tray, so I just turn the camera tray around underneath and cut off the end a bit. I run my 5.8GHz 400mW FPV on here. The transmitter is on the very back landing gear and gives amazing reception. The FPV and electronics all run off of one 2200mAh 3-cell battery, and the gimbal runs off its own 800mAh 3-cell. With the entire setup weighing 3 pounds, I get a max flight of about 8 minutes, but I only fly for 5 just to have some wiggle room. 8 minutes is low, but for this heavy of a tricopter with this high of KV motors, it is pretty good. If I were to have gotten lower KV motors, my flight times most likely would be higher, but the amount of power I get from these 1400 KV motors is worth the reduced flight time. Any other questions, feel free to ask. Also, pat on the back for 400 subscribers. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed.